All right, traders, John Caruso coming back to you here. We're reporting from the CME Group floor on behalf of RJO Futures. Uh, we're going to recap Monday's trade. Uh, first, we're going to take a look at the uh, Chinese GDP number that came out in the overnight. We did see that miss expectations. Also, looking back on Friday, we saw the U.S. retail sales miss expectations as well. Uh, that set investors running, rushing for the exits and commodities uh, altogether. Uh, we saw about a 9% slide in the gold market today. We saw a more than 12% slide in silver. Uh, and we also saw the equities finish up down about 2.5% today. Uh, it appears as if the fundamentals have caught up with this market. If you look back about two weeks ago when I was reporting, we talked about the U.S. jobs number. Uh, we did see that miss pretty big. We saw that miss by more than 100,000 jobs. But we saw the U.S. equities rally in the face of that. However, it looks like we're coming back down to those levels. Uh, the S&P is trading down around 1540 right now. Again, we saw a 2.5% slide. And again, it looks like the fundamentals have caught up with this market. Uh, taking a look at the Treasury market, we did see uh, the 10-year uh, notes. We saw the yields fall back to its lowest level since, uh, since January. We're trading down around 1.7 on the yield. Uh, the 10-year notes wrapped up about 133.05. They were up about five ticks on the day. Uh, looking at the 30-year, 30-year had a big day, up uh, over 14 ticks on the day. 148.03 is where we finished. Uh, taking a look at that market, uh, we get, we're going to run into some resistance uh, probably around 148.21. The way that we're playing that market is we're buying dips, we're selling the rips. I would wait for a little bit of a pullback. I think you might see stocks try to recapture a little bit of today's move to the downside. Uh, that should push the 30-year a little bit lower. I am very interested in the long side of the, uh, the Treasury market. Uh, we're going to flip over to currencies real fast, uh, taking a look at the U.S. dollar index. Pretty docile day today. We did see that market up about 12 ticks, trading 82.53. This is, uh, it's, this is going to be one of my favorite trades over the, over the next six months to a year. Uh, it's a longer-term trade, but I think the U.S. dollar index has a lot of upside potential from these levels. As we're starting to see a shift away from commodities. Uh, what was the number one hedge against inflation? The gold and silver trade. We saw a lot of uh, 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 U.S. dollar bears come out of the woodwork over the last couple of years. I think we're going to see the bulls start coming out of hiding. My next upside target in the U.S. dollar uh, comes in at 84 and a quarter. Okay, right now, again, we closed right around 82.53 today. Uh, we're going to touch briefly on the Australian dollar. Uh, the Australian dollar, it is a, it's an Eastern currency. It pays very close attention as to, as to developments in China. Obviously, with that big miss on, on uh, Chinese GDP in the overnight, uh, that sent uh, a lot of the, uh, the Australian dollar bulls running. We saw that finish down over 2% on the day. We saw a more than 200-point slide on the Australian dollar. We're trading right around 102.54. In my opinion, it looks like that chart has turned over, and we're going to test some lower ground here over the next couple of sessions. So uh, once again, feel free to give me a call anytime. My name is John Caruso. I'm over at RJO Futures. You can reach me at 1-800-669-5354. we got a lot of other foreign currencies to discuss. Feel free to call me anytime. And remember, as always, trading futures and options carries risk. It may not be suitable for all investors. Thank you.